Hello and welcome, Exiles, to my Energy Blade, Spell Blade, Battle Mage, and Quiz Fest. A little mouthful, but basically all it is, is a character about scaling a large energy shield pool, turning that into a big fat energy blade, and then using the Spell Blade support in combination with the Battle Mage node from Inquisitor to give whatever spell we're using a lot of lightning damage. Essentially, it doesn't matter if you're playing a Fizz spell, a cold spell, a fire spell, a chaos spell, you are playing a skill that deals lightning damage. This build is very fun with the new changes to give us a bunch of all these different versions of these transfigured gems because you can pop in whatever hit base spell you want and you can play it and you will deal probably a lot of damage. And it's pretty much just about choosing what skill you like the most and enjoying it. Now, as for the scaling, this build is pretty simple. It's all, I don't know about simple, that's maybe the wrong word, but it's all about ivory tower, scaling a big life pool, reserving that life pool, getting a bunch of flat ES from it, and then scaling up that energy shield with percent increases to ES, which we do by scaling a lot of strength and a lot of int. You'll notice our character has over a thousand strength in it. We use Shaper's Touch. This gives us a lot of percent ES scaling. And then our strength gives us a lot of flat life. And then we have a decent amount of percent life on the tree thanks to a lot of jewel sockets that give us a lot of scaling. Now you'll notice my character is set up for the new adorned jewel. This is not mandatory for the character. I think it's the high-end version of the character will use these jewel these jewels. But for right now, um, there's a bug where if you, you'll notice I was at 11K. Every time you go to the new zone, it will turn off the adorned jewel. And it's super annoying. It's part of the reason I'm getting a little bit burnt out on min-maxing the characters because I don't want to deal with swapping this in and out. That being said, my next build, I kind of want to use this. I kind of want to use this jewel for a lot of builds, so I hope they fix the bug. But anyways, if you can't afford this jewel, don't worry. All this means is you just grab a lot less of these sorts of jewel sockets that are a bit of inefficient spend expenditure. You don't have to go for these four socket jewels, three socket jewels, whatever it is. You take a lot of those out and you start putting more nodes into percent life around the tree. A lot of these notables and you'll end up with a pretty good character as well. Now, as for the character scaling, what, how do we deal damage? We get the flat lightning from the energy blade and then our strength scaling gives us a lot of percent spell damage from iron will. And then our percent life, our big life pool gives us a lot of percent damage from wrath pith. Combine that with our int strength scaling from Righteous Providence, we basically cap our crit without having to really do much of anything, which actually I didn't realize, but I was below crit. So maybe I went a little bit too hard on the dropping int. I You'll notice all this tree. This isn't really a min-max tree. I started grabbing AoE just to have for fun with Flame Blast, but I think I dropped a little bit too much of my scaling. So let's go ahead and just refund these three points here. Let's put those back into int and let's see where that puts us at crit wise. There we go, 98 crit. That's a lot healthier. We have a lot more ES. Our damage just went through the roof, but quite frankly, I only had this AOE stuff just because it felt good to play with. Having that extra AOE on Flame Bliss was just a fun factor thing. It wasn't really the proper way to scale the build. It was just, hey, I wanna do this for some fun, but now we got a little bit more int, we got a little bit more scaling, and we got our crit capped once again. Anyways, I was going over the crit cap. It's basically from Wrathbeth and from int strength scaling. And since I had a respect for a couple AOE nodes, that's what undercapped us on crit, but you get 100% crit chance without needing crit supports or anything like that. And on top of that, you don't even need things like Assassin's Mark. On the early game of this character, we use Inevitable Judgment Assassin's Mark to get to our crit cap. But in the late game, you have so much crit, you don't even need Assassin's Mark. You don't need power charges. And what I would recommend is eventually dropping this and going for an additional curse, anoint with Whispers of Doom, and then doing a Bane of Condemnation in combination with Ellie Weakness, Conductivity, and then going Lightning Pen on your supports. The way this works is, it makes the Bane really small, but it becomes a one button press, it's a fast cast, and on top of that, it applies both curses simultaneously at full effect. The normal Bane gives a less curse modifier, like a 25% less curse effect, it's not ideal, and that allows us to get around that. That's one of the main changes I made to upgrade damage even further as I was min-maxing this character but early game you do inevitable judgment until you're ready to swap to do more damage. Other things in the character we go for on our charms is I go for percent strength and strength in int. 
I also went for instant leech. This combines fantastically with getting leech through Storm Drinker right over here. Before that, we do instant leech over here, but I think this is a good upgrade when you can get the charm for instant leech. On top of that, we have Linger Ground and Coal Strike. The way this works is Linger Ground with Sanctuary means our Kong Ground never really ends. You'll see there's a two second timer that pops up whenever we shield charge, but it goes right down. And the way that works is it gives us curse reduction, regen, and it just feels pretty good on top of the 15% damage here. If you can't get a Linger Ground Charm, you can always go for Augury of Penitence. All right, that covers that stuff. As for the scaling on the build, this is a split personality tree. I would recommend early game until you get decent split personalities. Right now we have strength and dex and strength and um, uh, life. End game, end game, you want to do, you want strength and int, strength and int, but those split personalities are way too expensive, more expensive than even I could afford. So I didn't even get those. But early game before split personality, your tree will look a little bit different than this. You would, I would recommend checking out my previous video on the character if you want to see a tree before split personality. But the end game of this build, I think, is generally always going to be split personalities. Another like uh, thing you should look into in terms of like min maxing is I'd recommend take a good look at the witch wood that, that which was taken jewel. These things are insane. We got frenzy on hit, percent strength, and curse effect. But there's a lot of other good mods like strength and int, percent strength. Um, there's some regen mods. There's leech mods. There's coal. There's so many mods you can get on this jewel. I would recommend setting up a massive count filter and try to find yourself a good jewel because this thing is huge, kind of like a watcher's eye, but I think this can even be better on the high end. On top of that, our watcher's eye, I went for double pen with zealotry and um, wrath. These jewels are probably going to be a bit expensive. I would say, and what I'd recommend is, if you are on the lower end of scaling of the build, instead of going for double damage auras like Wrath and Zealotry, I would drop one of these, probably drop Zealotry, and I'd pick up Determination, and I'd go for a bit better armor scaling. I don't recommend dropping Determination until you're above 10k ES. When you're above 10k ES and you can get this 5% Recover Mastery, then I think Fizz Damage starts to matter a lot less. But before that, the Determination, having a bit more armor scaling in the build, I think it's pretty good and worth doing. All right. Hopefully that goes over the basics of the character, what we have set up on the tree. Now let's get into a bit of crafting. As far as crafting goes, we have essentially three to four rare items we can craft. The ring, the boots, the belt, and the amulet. Everything else is pretty mandatory to be a unique item slot. Those are those are basically guaranteed wrath pith, crown, ivory, shaper's touch, that sort of stuff. But as far as the rares... If you want to craft a ring, I'd recommend a Helica base or a regular ring base with a fractured attribute on there if you're on the lower end of budget. Getting any fractured strength or fractured int and then crafting with either Scorn Essences or the other attribute that is not fractured is what I'd recommend and then finishing off with a life craft. Specifically, if you're going to do the high end Helica base, I would recommend doing an Essence of Scorn until you hit one of the other two good attributes you need or a good cast speed and then attempting a fracturing orb. Once you have a fracture on one of those suffixes, it makes finishing the ring easier because you can spam until you get one of the other good suffixes, annul off the extra affixes, do a suffixes can't be changed, and do a reforged caster, which is a one in three or four to hit T1 cast speed, or a reforged chaos, which is a one in six to hit T1 chaos rise. That's kind of the approach I would take for one of these helica bases. As for a regular base, just getting a regular fracture on the lower end works great with an essence spam. Just do that until you hit some decent mods. As for the belt craft, Use Cyclopean Coil for a long time, but when you can afford to go for the belt craft, and by afford, I mean I'd have like 20 divines in the bank because this is a hell of a craft. It's not fun and it costs a lot to do, but essentially you do Essence of Spite on a Stygian Vise until you hit T1 Strength or T2 Strength, annul off the extra suffix. Then you need to have two prefixes and a Benchcrafted prefixes. So that way there's only one open suffix, and then you slam a Hunter Exalt. The Hunter Exalt has a 1 in 7.5 chance to get you T1... T1% attributes and a one in like 3.5 to get you a T2% attributes. And so that's the idea. I settled for T2% attributes because I was I was hating my life doing this craft. Point is, that's how you craft the belt. And then you do a suffixes can't be changed. Reforge crit will give you the flash charger and crit mod. And then you can benchcraft mana slam and then benchcraft life or ES, depending on if you hit a ES on the slam or you hit life on the slam, whatever it is. That's the idea behind the belt craft. As for the boots. The lower end is getting Fractured Chaos Rise and spamming your one essence until you hit the other attribute as high as possible. On the high end, it's doing a Fractured Life Roll or a Fractured Attribute Roll, either Int or Strength. 
and then doing in a fossil combination of hollow fossil fundamental and sanctified trying to hit an attribute or two t1 attributes on the suffix and a hollow fossil so that or a abyssal socket so that way you can scale the es even higher chaos res is a nice little defensive option it's a little bit cheaper but hollow fossil is in the end game going to be a better scaling option as for the amulet I generally will recommend either a simplex at the high end. I think that's the best slot you can do, which that's going to be an awakener orb craft. A great wolf is pretty good and a three rat is pretty good. Three rat will scale a bit higher defensively and a great wolf will scale a bit higher damage with crit multi. But all in all, all those three amulets are pretty similar in power. And then below that by a decent margin is Astromentus, which you'll use for a while until you're ready to go for one of these giga chat amulet options. As for crafting the three rat, the process is pretty simple. Fractured attribute plus essence of strength or essence, yeah, essence of uh, rage until you either hit crit multi, cast speed, or intelligence. Once you hit one of those three as a T1, you then do a seven scampy change, veil chaos, block mana, unveil life, benchcraft mana, slam, benchcraft percent ES. That's how you craft the base. And then you need to take it to a T3 Jorgen in research and turn it into a T3 talisman, which you have a one in seven chance to hit a three rat which is the talisman base that gives you percent attributes. That's how you craft the amulet. All right, that goes over all the gear pieces, the idea behind the character. I'll give you guys a quick little showcase of an arid lake with one of my favorite spells so far to play, which was ball lightning. And then you guys can make the build yourselves. Hopefully I've explained the mechanics of this character well enough and given you a good idea of how it works. I like this build because it can use pretty much anything. Uh, it's so powerful. In fact, I think most likely the next character I play and most of the characters I play this league will just feel weak by comparison. The unfortunate thing is starting when you start off with a character that can scale so strong by comparison, it makes other things feel weak. I think I'm still going to have a lot of fun with playing whatever builds are out there, but it's just something that sits in the back of your mind. Now, ball lightning, I think is really good clear. The only downside of this thing is if you're playing like an indoor map, you'll notice here, I'll showcase it on this rock right here. You can have your skill get absorbed if they run into the rock or whatever, or the wall or something, and they'll get deleted that way. For the most part, this isn't too much of an issue, but it is something you run into every now and then. I'm going to go ahead and do, I'll do this Wildwood thing real quick here. I am still on the search for more uh, Mist Kings. For the most part, I don't feel like I've gotten too much loot from this mechanic, but it has been fun. Uh, the couple times I did find the Mist King to get a cool jewel drop and to just see what the mechanic is all about. I would hope that maybe at some point they decide to buff the mechanic a little bit because right now it's basically you find any of the mini bosses they drop nothing if you find a um these guys i haven't had a single time where i went to a vendor and i looked over and i thought saw anything worth uh any sort of money in terms of like the mods on here so the loot hasn't been particularly good maybe i've gotten loot on in the map portion when i killed the empowered monsters but i don't really feel like i've felt the impact too much um, that being said, I think the mechanics kind of cool. It's got a neat little, neat little aspect of exploring the dark and whatnot. It's just been not particularly rewarding. So it doesn't feel worth doing, even though I, uh, have been doing it anyways, just for the fun of it, of exploring the dark and trying out the new mechanic. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and just get through the rest of this map and see what it's like to kill a warlord. All right. Now I'm running with, um, fanaticism. This is uh, optional. Fanaticism, I think, feels really good for a lot of self cast skills. For brands, it's maybe not as worth, but it still feels pretty good. Uh, for everything else, it's honestly pretty decent because we shield charge all the time, and the shield charge means a lot of times we have the fanaticism up, which is when we get the big AOE and the extra cast speed, which is when you like you run up to a boss and you just kind of obliterate them wherever they are because they have because uh, you have so much cast speed, you just unleash hell upon them. I forgot to curse, but generally what you want to do is on harder boss fights, you want to curse them so that way you have that extra minus res and you can deal a lot of damage. Um, but then you should be able to crank, um, crank out whatever boss you're fighting, whatever mechanics you're fighting, and deal enough damage to obliterate them. Alrighty. What I love about this build is it's, one of, it's a build you can invest into a ton and you always get nice results. You can use whatever skill you want in terms of spells that are hit based and it will do damage. It's just a matter of choosing what skill you like visually the most, what feels the best to play, what has the most quality of life, and then objectively, what is the strongest for the thing you want to do? Certain spells are better at certain mechanics and you can swap it out based on what thing you're trying to specialize in. For example, if I was going to go farm Legion, 
I'd probably go grab Valark and I'd one shot the legions and that would feel good. Versus if I was going to do Sanctum, I'd grab a Stormbrand of Indecision, I'd pop those down on the guards and just completely be able to steamroll Sanctum and it'd feel great. If I wanted to do Bossing, I'd maybe do a um, Flame Blast for the single target, or maybe I'd do a Penance Brand of Dissipation because it's really high single target. You could pick and choose based on what you're going to do, what you're going to farm, but the point is this build is very versatile and it's great in the new league where we got a bunch of new Transfigured Gems to try out. Great place to experiment and see what skills you really like. And then maybe you can be like, okay, I like that skill a lot. I might want to make a build within the future. Anyways, this is the Spellblade Inquisitor. Hopefully you guys like the guide information I have here. And enjoy, Exiles. Take care and peace out.